Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave. Today we're going to be looking at three ways Manchester United could line up without Paul Pogba. Make sure, of course, to like that goddamn video, subscribe if you're new, and turn the notification bell on. Anyway, let's get this party started. In a recent interview, Paul Pogba suggested that he wanted a new challenge away from Manchester United. So hypothetically, here's three ways United could line up without Paul Pogba. First up, the 4-4-2. In a recent interview with Andy Mitten, Gary Neville spoke about his time doing his A license with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He had his own ideas, and I can remember him telling me he wanted to play a 4-2-2-2, or a 4-4-2 with inverted wingers. This season, we've already seen glimpses of Solskjaer's 4-4-2, but to evolve his concept, the Norwegian would need to add new midfield steel. An in-double pivot of Wilfred Ndidi and Tengai Undenbele would be a perfect blend of domestic and continental talent. And on top of that, they're just 22 years old. In terms of players under 23 in Europe's top five leagues, Wilfred Ndidi won more tackles per game and made more interceptions than any other player in this category. On to Undenbele, no midfielder under 23 again, completed more take-ons than the Frenchman and of course the Lyon man is equally adapt at carrying the ball through the centre of the pitch as passing forward. Completed an impressive nine passes into the final third per 90 in the league last season. Whilst Ndidi's job would be to win the ball, Undenbele would be United's chief ball progressor in this system. Moving forward though, United would need some new creative options to implement Oli's dream. In the 4 triple two, the two interiors are the creative hub of the team, drifting inside whilst the overlapping fullbacks create the width in the final third. With rumours of Wambasaka's imminent arrival at Old Trafford, United now have depth of talent at fullback, capable of consistently overlapping in the final third. Again, maintaining the domestic and continental transfer approach, United could sign two players on the cheap, considering their talent in Ryan Frazier and Hakim Ziyech. Last season, the former was only better by Eden Hazard in terms of assists in Europe's top five leagues, 14 to 15, whilst Hakim Ziyech scored more goals and registered more assists than any of the United player managed domestically. These signings would be enough to further United's progression under Solskjaer, but the icing on the cake would be signing Paulo Dybala to partner Marcus Rashford up front. The baller is a classic deep line forward capable of combining with the attacking midfielders to create for Marcus Rashford but also to arrive late to finish late moves with his classic low curled effort. The Argentines 18-19 season was hindered by the arrival of Cristiano Ronaldo but his stats for his last full season were incredible. Juve's number 10 was directly involved in 27 goals in 26 starts, 22 goals and 5 assists. On to the second option for Manchester United, which would be buying Leicester City's entire midfield. Wilfred Ndidi, James Madison, and on loan, Yuri Tillersman. Did it wrong. Wilfred Ndidi, James Madison, and Yuri Tillemans. We've already mentioned Wilfred Ndidi, so we know what he'll bring to the side, but the more exciting part is the creative pair. United could follow the current trend of European football of playing a 4-3-3 with two free eights. We've already done a video on what Brendan Rodgers is doing over at Leicester City. If you want to check it out, the link will be in the description. But for Manchester United, the midfield trio would blend ball winning and creativity, giving United a fantastic platform for their front three to excel. Last season in the Premier League, United had four players who scored 10 or more Premier League goals. So finish isn't the problem. Creating the chances is, and that midfield will go a long way to fixing this problem. James Madison is the only player in the Premier League to create over 100 chances, averaging 2.8 per game. Incredibly, more than Lionel Messi managed in Europe's top five leagues. Whilst Madison would add the creativity, Tielemans would make their team tick something Manchester United have solely missed since the days of Paul Scholes and Michael Carrick. Signing Leicester City's midfield three that already works would allow them to have an immediate impact on Manchester United. And finally, the third option is to build Manchester United around Angel Gomez. The England youth international could become the heartbeat of United's midfield as a number 10. Gomez is a classic trecortista, a player that dictates the team's offense in the final third. United's best performance of the season came in Paris, with United lining up in a 4-4-2 3-4-1-2 hybrid, defending in that 4-4-2 and attacking in that 3-4-1-2. And Gomez could fill the role at number 10. Luke Shaw put in a man of the match performance against the great Lionel Messi in the Champions League as a left centre-back. And we could see that going forward. So United would require a new centre-back to play alongside Lindelof 
and Shaw. West Ham's Issa Diop could be the guy. The French youth international seamlessly adapted to life in the Premier League last season, and he'd be an immediate impact on United's defence. Compared to Manchester United's centre-backs in the Premier League last season, only Smalling won more aerial duels and Lindelof completed more passes. But Diop won more duels and made more interceptions per game. And at 22, he could become a rock at the back for years to come. But with Shaw moving to centre-back, United would have to enter the market for a new left wing-back. The best attacking option on the market right now is Philippe Kostic, who was directly involved in 16 Bundesliga goals last season. A very direct player capable of picking up the ball on the halfway line, beating a man and creating a goal, in the classic style of an old-school winger. Kostic completed more dribbles than any other left wing-back in Europe's top five leagues last season. But not only can he attack, he can defend. Kostic won two times tackles per game in the Bundesliga, more than any United fullback managed in the Premier League last season. In the knockout stages of the Champions League, Scott McTominay was United's best player. Finding him an aggressive partner would allow United and Gomez to thrive. Thomas Partey could be an all-action solution. In the league last season, he managed 6.3 ball recoveries per game, 4.1 tackles per game and a dribble success of 86%, all whilst managing 8.5 passes into the final third per game. A fantastic option to partner McTominay and allow Gomez to thrive at number 10. Whatever happens with Paul Pogba at Manchester United, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is steering the ship in the right direction. If Pogba does leave, United would have more than enough in the bank to sign quality replacements for Solskjaer's Manchester United. Of course, make sure to like the goddamn video, subscribe if you're new, and turn the notification bell on. I've been Statman Dave, see you later. Tielemann. 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 Will Frendini, James Madison, and on loan Yuri Tielemann. 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 Leicester City's midfield three, Tielemans. <laughs>